Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very unique and a very well-conducted study on the role of AMH, anti-malarian hormone. Often, we use AMH as a tool a tool that allows us to look at the ovarian reserve and to come to certain conclusions. We also look at AMH and come up with many statements that may not be true. An AMH is looked at and we tell a woman that yes, your ovarian reserve is very low and your chances of pregnancy may be extremely low. Based on AMH, often a decision is made whether to treat or not to treat. Again, it's important to realize that the role of AMH is validated in IVF and not in nature. The question is, is there any role of AMH and predicting pregnancy in nature? Now, this paper was published in JAMA and they looked at the association between biomarkers of ovarian reserve and infertility in older women of reproductive age. Again, it looked at ovarian reserve testing and natural conception. Is there a role? Let's go back to the basics. As oocyte and follicular growth starts declining, granular cells start secreting less inhibin and AMH. Now, what does a lower inhibin B do? The lower inhibin leads to a rapid and more rapid increase of FSH in the follicular phase. We also know that AMH is an excellent marker of oocyte yield in an IVF cycle. And what this study looked at is to look at what the biomarkers could convey AMH, FSH, urinary and serum, and inhibin B, and what is their impact on reproductive potential? What hypothesis were they testing? They were testing whether low diminished ovarian reserve or low ovarian reserve have any lower probability of conception in six months and 12 months. The study was conducted between April 2008 and March 2016. Women between 30 and 44 years were studied. Women with infertility were not included. On day 2, day 3 and day 4, FSH, AMH and inhibin B was tested and a patient kept diaries on menstruation, attempts at trying, spotting, etc. Now, when you look at the results, this is very interesting. 750 patients were included in this study, 140 dropped out, 65% conceived spontaneously, and 17% completed the study but did not conceive. Now let's go to the outcomes, which is very surprising. So these are not women who are infertile. These are women who are not infertile, but have, come, uh, have done an assessment of AMH and ovarian reserve markers done. Now the probability of conceiving of six months and 12 months, women with low AMH in six cycles had a 65% chance of conceiving, while that of normal was 62%. Low AMH after 12 cycles had an 84% chance of conceiving, while with normal AMH, it was 75%. The interesting part was that if the FSH was more than 10, the probability of conceiving in six cycles with a high FSH was 63, Percent normal FSH was 62%. In 12 cycles, the FSH with high FSH was 82%, and 
and normal FSH was 75%. And what does it tell us? It tells us that even if you had a slightly raised FSH or you had a low AMH, you, if you are not having infertility, your chances of spontaneous conception were very much similar. So again, does is AMH a test which tells you about infertility? The answer is no, it does not. The other thing which was seen was that in women who had a high AMH, they took longer to conceive. Again, why? It's because these are women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, very likely with irregular periods. At every age, we know that low AMH is not associated with diminished fecundity. If women were on the oral contraceptive pill for more than three months, again, there was no difference in the chances of falling pregnant. There are very small studies which show a link between AMH and pregnancy. Other links were not found. The question is, is there a link to miscarriage with low AMH? And again, this has not been proved. It is possible that as your AMH starts declining, it may activate a larger pool of follicles. Because what does the AMH do? The AMH holds follicles back. That is the role of AMH. And I think you know, as the AMH starts dropping, more and more follicles may start coming into the antral follicle zone where they can be stimulated. And also, those who have heard my talk on chasing the anterior follicle, it's exactly this logic that goes to. Women with lower AMH, some of them will have a variable anterior follicle count. And our challenge is, can we st stimulate when the anterior follicle count is the best? Also, as women get older, their FSH starts rising. And those rise of FSH sometimes start giving, giving you two or three follicles. Thus, in older women, you see a higher chance of having spontaneous twins. Now, when you look at this study, conception was looked at and not live birth. Some women did drop out and ovulation was not assessed. So uh, direct, you know, the best definition of fecundity was not made. Again, low AMH and the risk of miscarriage has not been proved. And also what we do not know is whether extremely low AMH of undetectable levels has a, uh, ha, is a cause of infertility. And that is something which is not known. Thus, what is very important is that if somebody comes to you and shows you a low, low AMH result, you can tell them, yes, I think it's time to try for a pregnancy or it may be time to freeze eggs. But it would be wrong to say that your chances of pregnancy in nature would be reduced unless this woman is already having infertility. And that is what we still don't know. Anyway, thank you very much. And I hope you can share this, like this page, and also follow us on YouTube. Thank you very much.